meeting to order and I need to read the notice that we've been provided by the governor pursuant to the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law and the governor's March 15, 2020. Oh, I'm sure wouldn't he? I'm sorry, I Joe. Yeah. Oh, Ron. Um, imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the Board of Health we will, conduct, will be conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Specific information and the general guidelines for remote participation can be found on the Office of the Attorney General's website. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted. Draft minutes will be posted on the town website as soon as possible after the meeting. Pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 30A20, paragraph 20. In an emergency, a public body shall post notice as soon as reasonably possible prior to the meeting. Notice shall be printed in a legible, easily understandable format and shall contain the date, time, and place of the meeting and a listing of topics that the chair reasonably anticipates will be discussed. And the website that you can go to to the AG is on the agenda that can be found on the website. I didn't want to go through it. So um, that being said, um, did everybody get a chance to look at last week's minutes? No, I, I had a problem with them. And so I was not able to get them out to you guys on time. Okay, so I'll call for a motion to table the minutes until the next meeting, is that okay? Yeah, motion made by Sue Hall. Second by Jerry Jean. Yes. <clears throat> Okay, so? Yes. Jerry, yes. Okay, we'll table um, the minutes. Um, so we, have, we are allowing up to 10 minutes of public comment. I see we have some public, some people that are considered public. If anybody would like to make a comment about what's been going on to any of the uh, members of the uh, board or um, Tammy? Our uh, Miss Spencer, our director. Now's the time. Emily, are you? Emily's me. Oh, that's you. Yeah. Oh, that is you, Emily. That's right. So you don't need anything. Miss um, Thompson is muted. Can we unmute her? I can ask her. Jerry, I believe everybody that's joining the meeting needs to at least identify themselves and okay. be part of the record. Okay, that being said, um, everybody not but members or every, you want everyone? And like uh, whoever this Thompson J and this 413-353-16288, those, those two okay. people really I'll need to it. identify themselves. Ms. Thompson or Mrs. or Miss or Ms. J Thompson, would you like to identify yourself please? Sure, Jeff Thompson. Four Grandview Street, Southwick, Mass. Hi, Jeff. Um, Peter. Hey, Peter. Peter. Uh, yeah, sorry, I forgot okay. the uh, unmute button. Peter Carrier, Westfield News. Okay. Um, the other announcement I need to make is that if anyone's recording this meeting, they need to um, tell us in advance. So just want to let everybody to know, except for Jessica, which we know we know is recording it. Jerry, uh, are you, Jerry, are you breaking up or is it just my reception? It might be your reception. Can you hear me now better? Yeah. Can you hear me now? Okay, Jerry, one more person needs to be identified. The one that just has a phone number down here. Um, okay, hi. 413-531-6288. Um, I'm sorry, but you identify yourself? Yeah, Sean Zigarowski, 6 Nicholson Hill Road, Southwick, Mass. Well, hello. Um, okay, everybody's been identified. Does anyone have a public comment they'd like to make? This is your time. Dr. Asia, this is Doug Moglin. Oh, I'm the, sorry. Just um, one other point of order is you just need to call the roll for your board so that okay. for the minutes. All right, so I'm, I'm Jerome Asia, I'm chair. Um, Jeannie Nielsen and clerk and Sue Braska is our, our vice chair are here. 
as long as as well as Tammy uh, Spencer, who's our director. I believe Doug wanted us to do a roll call for. Nope. That's fine. As long as you've just acknowledged who's here. Okay. All your votes should be roll call, but for how you just did it is fine. Just checking off who's here and who's absent. There's no one absent, so you're good. Okay, thank you. Okay. And uh, uh, you, you got to mention Kate Johnson. Yes. And Ms. Johnson is here, our public health nurse. Public health nurse. Thank All you. Right. And, Are we and now Jessica. getting anything right now? Can I proceed? Jessica Pelly. Oh, I, love Jessica. <laughs> I quit. <laughs> Can't quit now, Jerry. Can't quit I'm now. Not not here. Okay. All right. So, anybody have any public comment at this time? I normally um, also reserve some time at the end of the meeting if anyone has any comment. Um, that would be fine. But, okay. Gene, you're muted. Okay. So that being said, I'll reserve the rest of the public time at my option. If not, we'll move on to the director's report. Amy. Okay, ready? Um, let's see. So for um, routine report, um, I did uh, two perk tests, one at 145 College Highway, the other at 32 Fernwood. I had a fi final Title V inspection at American Inn, and I approved plans for 70, 68 Congamon Road, uh, Title V plans. I uh, conducted uh, two food service establishment inspections, one at Malicious and one at Kettlebread. And that's it for anything that didn't have anything to do with the coronavirus. Um, <laughs> So didn't pass, I assume. Is that correct? You have to go back? Say that again? Mr. Mr. D didn't pass, I assume, and you have to go back. Is that correct? N no, no, no. They were ready for me, and they did oh. a great job. We also did talked a lot about um, social distancing um, provisions and signs for everything. And, okay. Um, so uh, I guess it was a little coronavirus-related. Are, are we providing the signs for the establishments about wearing face masks when you enter? Yes. I'm, I mailed them out to... Uh, a good portion of the establishments and I'm still trying to figure out some other ones to um, mail them to. Okay. I hit most of, um, I hit all of our um, establishments with licenses at the health department. And then uh, I kind of looked through sort of, you know, drove through town and ticked off places. I thought I should also mail them to. Okay. Um, so uh, I guess on to coronavirus. Um, I stopped by the American Legion this week um, to kind of, talk about um, some things they might want to do to prepare for um, opening because I'm getting a lot of calls from businesses talking about um, starting, you know, at least getting some reopening procedures in place. Although we don't have anything formal from um, the governor uh, this way, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm available to all of our businesses to do that. Let's see. So, on Sunday, I received a call from the police department about an unlicensed food truck selling uh, food and alcohol out of the Cove parking lot. Ooh. I'm, yeah, I'm, uh, it is not a, a truck we've ever licensed before. I'm waiting for a police report um, to come in so that I can assess them a fine for operating without a license. Um, on the same day, I also had another call from the police about, um, I guess, uh, because the the, um, the gate house at the boat ramp hasn't been the North Palm boat ramp hasn't been staffed, um, there's been an overabundance of uh, of boats and uh, boaters in the water. So, on one of the shores where it's a little bit of a beach, um, a lot of people were congregating with their boats together, not respecting any social distancing and being well over ten people. So the chief and I hiked down to that area and we kind of sort of assessed the situation and. Um, the Conservation Commission is putting up some nice signs, basically just something along the lines of, you know, keep our beaches open, you know, be smart, six feet apart. And mm -hmm. this weekend, I believe um, somebody who works as a floater in town hall, but also for the police department will be staffing the gatehouse. So hopefully we'll be able to um, keep the number of boaters down. Also, the governor um, did put in his order that... Um, 
uh, our boat ramps and our uh, waterways are only open to people with Massachusetts licenses. So I don't know how that's going to work out this weekend. <laughs> mm. uh, us, especially being a town that is, you know, surrounded by another state, our lake. Well, actually, we're, Connecticut surrounds um, South Pond, actually. Those people are all in Connecticut. I think it's going to be hard to tell them to keep their boats out of that water. That, that I, I don't ag I agree with that. <laughs> well, the lake belongs to the Commonwealth, but those people have, you know, rights of entry, I would assume. So um, I don't so know what you, the, police, the police department is going to do about it. If you have a license plate you, um, that's not Massachusetts, you won't be able to park in the, um, at the boat ramp. Okay, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. Hmm. Are there going to be signs? What type of signs? There so people know ahead of time that you have to be a Massachusetts resident in order to I don't know. use the water? I don't know. That, that the lake management... Um, uh, commission and I guess whoever staffs the gatehouse will be working on that. Doug, what's going on with that? Do you know? Doug? As far as what? Do you know what's going on with the lake management com uh, committee <coughs> about staffing that and making sure only Massachusetts residents get in? They're working on it. There was email traffic today that LMC is meeting next week as well. Okay. They're meeting uh, seven o'clock next Thursday, a week from today. <laughs> but they've been talking about this, and and they did go over the governor's order, as far as um, I think it's not a problem for people that live on the lake in Connecticut to launch their boat. Okay. Uh, I didn't read the order exactly, but it definitely for launching boats you have to have mass plates. Okay, I'm fine with that. Okay. So one of the um, issues that we have been or I've been um, researching into is our campgrounds um, on the, uh, the the governor's essential uh, services list. He um, it stipulated that only campgrounds that are 12 months out of the year with long term residency can open up for um, uh, for uh, residents. Uh, but we we did get some word that. As long as, um, as long as they're either own uh, people own a lot or lease a lot or pay a taxes, that the campground can apply to um, the executive office for housing and economic development to open up early. So I called up both of our campgrounds and informed them and gave them the number. Um, uh, this doesn't mean that they're open for any short-term rental rentals or family-style camping. Um, and that game rooms, common bathrooms, and the pools still have to be uh, closed until the orders are lifted. But I know there's a lot of people from out of state who usually come up for the 1st of May, and I guess they're, some of them are parked in a Walmart parking lot waiting to um, utilize their space. So this way, at least these people will be able to get back to their um, summer area, summer homes. Uh, let's see. I um, have been in contact with um, Superintendent Willard and the high school principal, and they've sent me a plan to um, talk about their June 6th graduation. Um, I think I sent it to the chair members. It's um, it's pretty it's pretty uh, lengthy, and it, I mean that they have some pretty good ideas. It's very similar to what I'm hearing that other towns are doing. We're still waiting on the state. Um, said that they were going to put out some guidance on graduations uh, uh, to be able to hold them, but uh, we haven't had any yet, so it was still sort of in a holding pattern for that. But as it is, June 6th is past the May 18th reopening date, but um, we still don't know where we're going from there. Um, I read, did everybody else get, did, did Sue and Jean, did you get copies of that plan? I I did. I read it. What do you think? Um, I'll wait till May 18th. Okay. I, I thought that it was um, pretty detailed, and um, I didn't have any problem with it. But um, I who's going to be policing the um, grounds? Who's going to be policing the parking lot? Uh, I guess the school department's going to have to hire people to do it. 
police, I assume. So yeah, that's one of my questions on who's going to police this. And I imagine that yeah, you're going to, you're going to be able to keep uh, siblings away. Um, we're only going to allow two just parents and two people. I don't know. That's the that's the rule. I mean, I assume two people in a car, and someone's going to have to be monitoring it. Um, it's that's very that's very normal for um, larger larger towns and cities to only get two tickets to a high school graduation. And I don't think. Well, I think she needs to make the doc, Dr. Willard needs to make it very very clear. If you try to sneak a sister or a brother in, you're going to be asked to leave. Yeah. I mean, that's, hey, um, hey, I graduated and had two tickets, and a slew of people came for my family. Why? Well, uh, so. I don't, yeah, but this is, you only allowed one parking pass. So there's only two people in a car. That's what I read. Is that right, Tammy? Yes. Okay. So they'll have somebody, there's 40 spaces in each, each lot. Um, they'll post whoever they need to post to look in the car. I assume we won't open the trunk, but, you know, maybe they will. And if there's more than two people, you just in won't the, let them in. The seniors, where are they going to congregate? I don't have there, to, they uh, would start they would start the ceremony s seated six feet apart with their diploma on their chair already but I know but where are they gonna walk down from are they gonna walk down together like they usually do from the high school I don't know excuse think, me uh, chairman Asia there's actually an email that just came out yeah, not sorry. five minutes ago from yeah. superintendent Willie <clears throat> I think that, yeah, I, yeah I, I, thought, I think that she's going to um, be very um, careful about her social distancing. And I think her plan has been as well form, formulated. It just needs to be enforced. That's all. And that's would be. I just my, want to see, are the seniors all going to meet up there at the high school and walk No, they're going to be, you know, nobody's going to be within six feet at any time. That's her plan. So it's not going to be a bunch of kids all together and then lining up at one time. So that was my impression of the email. Um, did you get it's, it, Sue? Yeah, I read it. According to the yeah. email that right. just, she funny. just sent, um, the actual date now could be would be either June 20th or July 25th. So we're putting it even further away. Okay, so we'll, we can get the detailed plan and then we can go over it next week and make sure everybody is in agreement that it's okay to do it or we need to tell her to make some changes so I'm um sure if we're we're she's pushing it out 60 days do you think we really have to make a decision next week or should we wait till this gets a little closer i think if she gives us a plan and we're happy with it then we can say okay i mean she can always change it as it as it well, that's my point. Why approve it and change? Not to approve it. Just, we'll just look it. at it. We can look at it, but we'll take I mean, a look at it. And if you think that you need to change something, then you'll say something. And if you don't need to change something, then say, okay, as of today, we're we're okay with it. We'll give you, a, you know, a month's notice. But right now, or if you want to change it, then change it. And if things change, then we can say, hey, we you know we voted to call off your graduation. I mean, sorry. I mean, that's the chance she's taken. Everybody's taken. I mean, there's no reason not to see it and take a look and see what everybody thinks about it. Um, well, I'll, I'll keep, I'll keep, um, I'll keep in touch with, yeah. uh, just send with, it to everybody, Tammy, and take a look at it and, and take her at her word and make sure we have, you know, trust, but verify and whoever said that, but, um, you know, let's start the process early and we can refine it as we get closer. That's all. I mean, but I don't think it's, I don't think it's fair to her to say, you know, you know, a week before we don't like it. That's, let's say it now we don't like it make some changes. We want you to, we would like you to make some changes or give us some assurances that you're going to be able to staff your parking lots and only make sure that two people are in a car. And thank you very much. You know, so and so we, we can ally our fears if we have any. And she can we can correspond back and forth. We've got almost two months to iron out any details that we want. We don't have to approve or disapprove anything, but I think 
going over the plan is a good idea and see if you want to make any changes. What do you think, Gene? Yeah, again, I'm thinking that this is an event that's going to possibly maybe happen in 30 to 60 plus okay. days. All right. So and we can make... I'm sorry, Gene, can... I, I cut you off again. I'm sorry. Until you see it, if there's changes, are you going to, you know, make change after change after change? It just, it, to me, it doesn't make sense to act, to re write something in stone now that's not going to happen for a long I, time. I didn't say we, okay, Tammy, why don't you just send it to everybody and let us all look at it and we can comment on it next week. So we'll leave it at that. How's that, Gene? Is that okay? Uh, that's fine. I haven't seen it yet. So okay. Send let's, send, let's, send what? The her plan. The new plan yeah. or the email that I just received? The new plan, the latest plan that Dr. Willard has to get these kids out of town. Okay. Uh, I'll do that. And also the closer we get to May 18th, there should be more guidance from um, the state on reopening committee. Okay. Right. Um, so do we want to Oh, Amy, sorry. are you talking about, is there another plan other than what you sent in the email? Uh, there, there's, um, the, the new email that we just received about five minutes ago is a little okay. lengthier, but I haven't re read it either, so. Okay, you're going to send that one. All right. Sure. Yeah. Okay, um, so the, the big news, I guess, for today is that the governor has, um, allowed certain provisions to be put into place for allowing golf to occur. Um, while uh, golf is still considered uh, a non-essential um, service, uh, our municipalities are able to decide if, go if um, golf courses will open um, and uh, they've given us guidelines um, in which to do so. I sent those out in email too. So, um, I'm assuming tonight we need to vote whether or not we approve of the guidelines and are allowing um, the golf courses to open. Um, mm -hmm. Some things uh, in the uh, plans to think to notice. Um, so there, uh, it's a golf is still considered a non-essential business, and the only employees that are allowed to be working on um, site are uh, groundskeeping um, and any other employees that are required for security and contractor. Um, there's quite a long list of, uh, of uh, guidance for social distancing, uh, no golf carts and things like that. Um, and also uh, it, the uh, guidance also states, um, hold on one second. Uh, oh, I'm you missing my spot. To 15 minutes before your tea time and you have to leave as soon as you finish. Oh, so the, that um, any cl like club facilities, um, such as uh, clubhouses, pro shops, restaurants, bag rooms, and locker rooms must remain closed. And this um, came from Governor Baker? Uh, this, yeah, this came from the, um, the state's uh, Office of Local and Regional um, Public Health. Okay. And um, how is this going to get enforced? I think the pro's going to enforce it. I've talked to him. I, listen, I'm a member at Edgewood, so I've, um, I've talked to, to Bob extensively. And before they closed him down, he was already disinfecting his carts. He had taken the rakes out of the, um, of the traps. He's ready to um, pull up his hole so the ball doesn't go in the hole. Um, he, wants, he wants to make sure that he stays open, and I'm sure he's ready to enforce everything that on the list. Um, he was even chasing people off that were walking on the course before we even knew about it. They had, people had started to play right after they closed down and he, he got them and kicked them off because he was talking about fines and stuff. And um, he's pretty on top of it and ready to go. So that's your answer. We have three golf courses in town? Two. How about the ranch, Longies? The ranch, oh yeah, Longies is, yeah, he's Longies, we have three golf courses, that's correct. He's, he's a miniature, more, more of a miniature golf course, I think. He may have one or two carts that he uses for people 
but basically it's a par three course with a couple of par fours. I haven't been there in a while. Three is yeah, right. Yeah, I'm gonna dial, I'm gonna dial in because I keep losing you. Okay. Tammy, anything else? About golf or? Yeah. Um, so I would assume that that things like um, miniature golf and anything where you have to rent golf clubs would be off the would be off the books here. We're talking about places where you bring in your own equipment. You can't use anybody else's clubs at all. No. You can't rent, so, you can't rent any clubs. So miniature golf's out. I'm, yeah, I'm not too familiar with Longy. It's a like I said, it's a it's just a short course. That's all. And, okay, uh, so their course can be open. Yeah, he has. He, he yeah, he'll have a. He'll be there to um, have a starter. Um, he may require tee times. I know that Edgewood is, and um, most of these courses that are open require tee times and prepayment. If you're not, unless you're a member, so, um, and they still require tea times. Okay, so are you on? Okay, let's wait for her because we'll just have to go through it again. You want to, you have anything else, Tammy? No, let's wait. Yeah, I'd rather wait and have yeah, you guys vote, we'll have vote on that again. first. Um, somebody's got to let her in. Tammy, do you have to let her in the meeting? Tammy? She's out, off, telling other kids. Kate, Sue says she can't get into the meeting. Thank you. Oh, you're in? Yeah, I see you. Yeah, about time. Go ahead. Well, show up on time. Move. <laughs> Move to a nicer place where you can get Wi-Fi there. I'll go to your house next time for our You're meeting next more week. More than welcome here. Okay. My wife thinks highly of you. Put up with me. All right. Here. Okay. So All where right, were so we? We were, um, Tammy was going through the, the, the list of what they can and cannot do at the yeah, golf course. Okay. Place. That's all right. Cause I, yeah, I have it in front of me. Okay. So, um, Jeannie, have you looked at it? Jeannie, no, have I haven't. Okay, well, we what do you so what so what do you think? Um, I think they should open with these restrictions. Okay, so if they're if they're well aware of them. Yeah, I'm going to be playing tomorrow, so I'll make I'll be I'll be well aware. I'll make sure Bob and I have a discussion. He's he like I said he's. Um, interested in making sure he he stays within these rules. Like I said, he was proactive. You know, he applied the first day to get an exemption and didn't get it. And he didn't whine about it. He enforced it. He kicked the he kicked some guys off who tried to play and took the pins off. You know, so there weren't any pins on the greens. So there were no. So what golf, what golf what golf course is that one? This is Edgewood. All right. So now we have to, the ranch and and Longy. What yeah, do you so, think, Gene? Sorry, what do you think, Jean? I, you know, I honestly don't know anything about golf or, or opening or what they do. However, one of the things that we made sure of is to make sure that people wear face masks in big Y and stay six feet away from each other. They're not doing that. So you can say the golf course guys have to do this. They have to sit in their car. They have to etc and on and on and even though it's a great idea and you have to keep people far apart and people have to wear masks people aren't doing it well i don't think there's a requirement to wear masks on the golf course that's number one but number there were in big y and people were walking in big y without well that's masks. you know i'm okay so i know unless you want to i i know that 
it was pointed out to the manager at Big Y about not having masks on, and I think she said that she was going to um, take care of it. Yeah, this was yesterday. Well, you know, then, then Tammy has to go back down to Big Y and say, hey, you know, what are you doing? And... But that's my point, Jerry. You know, you can't police you every can't police incident, everybody. every person. You're right. You can't. You're right. And so we need to decide now if we want to let Edgewood and Longies and the ranch open under these restrictions. That's that's what's on the table. So I'll take a motion to let them open. Um, wait a minute. These, do, you want, do you want some more discussion? Yeah, if you want. I'm not... Right. I mean, I, I second that motion, but I, I agree with Jean. You can tell them, given these guidelines, but you're not there watching them, so you don't know what they're doing. Well, you know, you've got a lot less people to patrol, and they're spread out. Um, it's not like they're next to each other. They don't come in contact with each other. He usually has eight-minute tea times. Now he's got 15-minute tea times. So people, I mean, yeah, you can slice the ball in the other fairway, you know, so somebody just hits it back. But we're, that, we're way spread out, you know, right. and the only chance of contact is when you get on the tee. And um, I know the guys I'm playing with are going to stay six feet apart. Right. Um, and then what are the consequences if they don't follow these guidelines? Well, if, if you know, if, if you get complaints uh, enough and you go to Bob Muha and say, Bob, you're not taking care of, your, of these people, then I guess we have to go back there and say, hey, you know what? shut down for a week, but I, I'm positive because of the lack of, of contact that people have with each other on that golf course, that he won't have any problem. Um, and he, as a matter of fact, he, he emailed, emailed every member the governor's guidelines and told them that he'd be enforcing them. So I don't, that's why I said I don't have a problem with what. Okay, who, who's in charge of the ranch? Tammy, um, do you know? Yeah, Jared um, is Jerry. the pro there. Um, I can give him a call tomorrow and make sure he's on board. Or I can call the owner today and make sure he's on board. Or or what does Tammy want to do? Tammy, what would you like to do? Can you can you ask me what can you ask me what we're doing? Well what you're what you're asking. Can you say it repeat how do, with how the do question? you feel how, how do you feel about the golf courses opening? Um, with those with those guidelines, I think it's fine. I, I think everybody knows my personal opinion is there's a stay at home advisory, <laughs> and and everybody should be closed. But you know I, there also is an under the essential activities that the P Department of Public Health guidelined in their stay at home advisory, um, outdoor activities or or outdoor exercise can be considered essential. So I'm assuming that this is where they're slipping in this provision for the golf course. And actually making them walk is actually, I would say probably 2% of the people at the at Edgewood walk and less at the ranch. Well, you can't have a golf cart. So you're, walking. I know that. So that's what I'm saying <laughs> is that it, it, it is good exercise because most of the, most of the people who play at Edgewood and play at the ranch, take a cart. So, that may dissuade some people from even going or only playing nine holes. Um, it, but except for that, it, it, is a, it is good exercise. I mean, I hope they have an so are people meal. Are people at the golf courses now playing? Not in, not in Southwick. No, not okay. in Massachusetts. They um, are in Connecticut. We're, there's 47 states that have opened their golf courses. So we'll be the 48th. All right. Now, does, should, should Tammy go and contact the owner of the ranch and Longies and just reiterate That's up what's to Tammy. going on? I, I've, I've talked to s some staff from, from Edgewood, uh, and, but I don't have a ranch contact yet. Okay. Um, Do you have a contact I was from gonna, the ranch? Well, we can I, call I wanna, tomorrow morning. There's, when, once we I, once we put this into an uh, if we put this guideline into an effect, I would I want to issue it to them. Okay. Okay. Good enough. Um, so okay, so on the table we have a motion, motion and a second. And a second. Um, Jean, is there any more dis Any more discussion? Is there any more discussion? Yeah. No, I'm I'm all for opening, but 
does uh, the town of Southwick have to agree to this if it, yeah. if the governor already stated that it was okay to do? Left it up to the municipalities to decide one way. Or oh, okay. I'm fine. I'm for it. Okay. Um, I got a motion and a second, Jean. Yes, I said I'm for. Uh, yes, a uh, yes vote, Jean Nelson. Sue. Yes vote, Sue. Okay, Jerry votes yes. Well, actually, yeah. so since we have two yeses, I'll recuse myself. So why? I'm a member at Edgewood. So. Oh, okay. Uh, so, let me choose. I'll, I'll vote present. How's that? All right. So, Tammy, you'll take care of that. Yep, I certainly right, will. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Tammy. Okay, so um, I'll move on. Uh, since we just approved one outdoor activity, um, the Aguam Revolver Club is looking to reopen their outdoor range. Um, I'm thinking that if we um, require them to follow similar guidelines of the um, course, like maintaining social distancing, um, wearing face coverings, having anyone who has to be there to run the site wear face covering, um, I, I can't see why if we allowed the golf course to open. Why not the revolver club? I don't have can, a I problem with it. can I say something? Can I say can I say something? The sir. golf course here we have guidelines that they have to follow. Can the revolver club come up with some guidelines too? Or I can come up with some guidelines. I could go visit. Yep. I like that. Yeah, I'd like to come up with some guidelines and have you speak with them first, and then we could. Um, my thought is to vote on it next week after you present it to them. Certainly. But Jean? that's my opinion. Jean? Jean, what do you think? What do you think of what Sue said? Yeah, you go ahead. I make a motion to, to table opening of uh, the firearms range until we have more we information. Never, we didn't have a motion, so we don't have to table it. So We'll just let Tammy... Do what Sue's asked her to do. We don't need Okay. Know. Hey, Tammy. Is that okay? With okay. You? okay. Yeah. I'll be in contact with them tomorrow. Right. Um, so last week I had mentioned that um, Pastor Dan from uh, the Living Hope Church had contacted me about drive-in services, and you wanted a little bit more um, detail. Um, so these are the details that um, he had proposed to me. Um, it would be a drive-in service. Uh, they would be utilizing a sound system for people to hear out of their windows. Um, people would be advised to not get out of their cars, but if they do get out of their cars, they'd be advised to wear a mask. Members directing traffic would wear masks. Um, they would use only, make their bathrooms only single sex only with one person allowed at a time. Their singing team would be spaced six feet apart and everybody would be using separate mics. And that was the plan that yeah, well, he had given me. He's gonna, so in other words, when everybody gets out of the car and wears a mask, how are they gonna social distance? Uh, that, that's where I think the problem yeah. lies is having- He would have said, I'm gonna keep people. everybody in the cars and I'm fine with it. But once he says, I'm going to let people out of the, I'm going to, I'm not going to stop people from getting out of their cars, then we know what's going to happen. They're all going to get out of their cars and they're all going to get into a group. And it, it's going to be. I don't, ex can I, say that I don't accept um, his plan. Yeah, if he would have taken, I'm going to let them get out of, I'm going to tell them, try to keep them in cars, but if they get out of their cars, they should wear a face mask. I don't think that's acceptable because my fear is that if you get a hundred people and they're going to get out of the cars, they're not going to social distance and they're not going to work. They may not wear face masks even because that's my opinion. So I agree with Sue. Yeah, I agree thinking? with Sue. Okay. Tammy, you want to go back to him plan. and tell him that we don't. Yeah. I, I think that this is something that we should still wait till after May 18th to okay. work on opening up. Okay. Is, is that your, was that, would that be your single objection, Sue, what I said about letting them get out of cars? Well, to me, I thought it'd be like a, a drive-in. They stay in the car. He has a microphone. He's up there 
you know, conducting a service. Um, forget the singing unless they're all going to sing from their car. But, yeah, I don't want anybody getting out of the car. And okay. I want someone there having, you know, parking the cars, how they're going to park, everybody being six feet apart, all the cars. So I don't accept the plan. And okay, so we might so as well just wait until May 18th to see what comes. So tell me, uh, Tammy, you might want to call him and tell him we have objections. And the two objections were to singing and letting people get out of the car at all. So, and tell them today's the and seventh. Getting out to, and getting out to use the restroom, no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's an hour service, so I mean, I guess. I, if even with those things, I think I still would be hard pressed to want to have a large group of people congregating over the number of 10. Okay. Um, it just, it just seems it's unacceptable and that we're waiting for May 18th from the guidance from the state. See, Jean, you agree with that? Yes, I do. Okay. Then now that's that. Okay. That's the last item on my list. Okay. Um, Kate, I guess you're up. Okay. Um, so Kate Johnson, I'm a public health nurse, uh, for the town of Southwick. Um, I have actually two two things to um, to share. So I did email um, a bar graph of <clears throat> the the weekly, basically a weekly bar graph of cumulative cases of just positive COVID cases in the town, and um, I hope everyone got that. Yes, uh, I was. You were able to help me. Thank you. Did it. Did it? Did you see it, Jerry? I printed it out. Yeah. Oh, no, you I, did. You okay. It. I I wasn't able. This is Sue. I was not able to open it on either my phone or my iPad. Okay. So, so I don't know what that's all about. Okay. So, a, so um, Sue, basically, um, Kate well, started let, back on let, let, 20, 27. Well, let Kate explain it. Okay, Kate. Why don't you explain it? Okay. So. Um, it's a graph of weeks <clears throat> of accumulation of cases. So we started March 27th is basically when kind of all the proverbial started. So you'll see every week goes up by certain cases. So if you happen to look at this, five, three, five, four, and five, five, right? We've kind of plateaued between 47 and 48 cases. But the last bar that I put in uh, for 5-7 is the ones that are currently active. So either, um, well, it does not include contact. So these are confirmed cases. So the seven that are actively monitored right now are people that are in quarantine. I'm sorry, isolation. So they're positive. These are they are positive, positive. yes. Seven positive cases. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I don't know where this is going to go, but I thought it would be important to share kind of where we've been in hopes that there would maybe be some decreasing of um, the, the, the seven, if you will. So the seven will kind of wean out based on when isolation is completed. And then hopefully there would be fewer cases um, added to this because you could see that there were some major jumps um, in mid-April, um, end of April over to like the last week. So there, there have been increases, but it's kind of stabilized. So my hope is that it has plateaued, but that you can only really know that on a day-to-day -day basis. Because tomorrow I could get five cases. But um, so I wanted to share that with the board and ask if you had any questions about the graph. Am I right that since um, May 2nd, we've only had two cases? Yes. Okay. Good. Did we did we see anything come out of the testing that they did at the American Inn? I have not heard a thing about that. Mm. Um, not one thing. They, they now that 
that testing was what a week at least a week ago yeah i think uh, so t- last tuesday i think so i would have seen something i would think from that population of people and i have not at this point doesn't this kate, state, i'm sorry kate, kate will you get the negative results also at the um, American Inn or just the positives? Just the positives. I can look up um, by address for negatives, but only the positives come into my workflow. Um, and do we know, did they did they test everybody at the American Inn? I am going to assume yes. I don't know what the plan was for that. Okay. I mean, I can certainly look um, by address to see um, for negatives because they'd have to have an address in the system. And so I can manually look at that because they don't separate them um, by report for positives versus negatives. But I can certainly look by address. So is it, po- is it possible that they could all be negative? <laughs> that would be good. It, it, well, Right now, as of today, from the time of testing last Tuesday, which is what, nine days? Mm -hmm. Unless something went awry with um, processing the labs, I would have known by now. Okay. So the the state posts every every night. um, I think the residents over 55, do they, is that or am I mistaken? I know they do nursing homes. Is American Inn considered a, you know, Assisted, assisted living. I think it's posted on the website. Let me look. So you guys can keep talking. What le- website, Jerry? It's the one we get every every night. Mass.gov that we get every night. They report the cases in Massachusetts. They have an overview. They, the da- it's on the dashboard. Oh, I see what you mean. Okay. Okay. Let me see. I will look and see if there's anything at the American Inn. I would also like to add that the data that you see um, posted through the dashboard or through Department of Public Health, they are delayed in their uh, reporting. So I believe, and I could be wrong on this, I think they have um, 42 confirmed in Southwick, um, which is not accurate. We actually have 48. So um, I'm not sure why there is that discrepancy. So but- I'm, on a, I'm on the website and it says assisted living residences, residences with two or more cases, known cases. And this was yesterday's, yesterday's um, email from the state. Okay. The American is not listed as having um, more than two. So, okay. Okay. I don't know how far behind they are, but that's that was from yesterday. Okay. Uh, they're not listed. So they have two or less, Jerry? It says less than two. Less than two. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you can, you can, I guess we can look it up by address and our, I guess we can call them. And find right. Out. Right. Absolutely. Okay. Who, who, who makes that phone call, Tammy? Okay. I, I can look into it. Okay. That's fine. Absolutely. Okay. Any other thoughts or, or questions about the, the graph? It seems to me that it leveled off this week with two cases. Mm-hmm. Well, we're eight yep. since last week, right? Yeah, eight since last week. Right. Oh, yeah. And I was in quarantine myself, by the way. Oh. My uh, granddaughter's dad got tested last Friday, and I had seen him be two weeks Tuesday, but his test came back negative. So that puts me out of quarantine. Is that right, Kate? Even we like yes, we like negative tests. Yeah, but yeah. even if, you know what, even if it's a false negative, it's, mm-hmm. I'm still past the two-week mm-hmm. um, contact. The so two-week window, yep. yep. It would, none of us, none of us in the house have any symptoms. So. Would we have been counted in that? Because I know that I had, I had called you and talked to you, but that's only 
the quarantine only counts for positive cases, right? Not maybe. So, so if you had been a, if they were positive, yeah. you would have been, uh, you would have been put in the system as a contact for potential exposure. Okay. And you would be monitored for those two weeks. Okay. The quarantine. Mm-hmm. Okay. So Taking temperatures, et cetera, et cetera. I guess I'm lucky. Yes, you are. I appreciate it. <laughs> okay. Go ahead, Kay. I'm sorry. Okay. So the second thing um, is um, I'm going to be going on an LOA. <laughs> Um, which I had mentioned to Tammy because I think obviously bringing it up to the board, um, I am going to be away from uh, May 20th through July 24th. And I had talked to, to Tammy in terms of the collaborative. So there's a collaborative that happens in the MAVEN system, which is the how we document and how we do surveillance and follow-up. And what would happen is if a COVID case is not picked up by myself during the day, it rolls over at 12.02 a.m. over to the collaborative. So I, I think that that would be, and I would let the state probably know this, but I think that would be the backup in terms of um, the follow-up, which is critical, the monitoring, the, the, they would do the phone calling, et cetera. The only thing is, how do we get data back to town? So uh, that would be a question in terms of, is someone going to call Tammy, you know, after I'm gone and say, okay, no new cases, um, you know, we have three that are being monitored, whatever the case might be. The other issue is non-COVID cases. So if there's an E. coli, if there's a salmonella, et cetera, um, what to do with those. So in the past, I always um, either referred my cases to Westfield or Agawam. Again, it's not volume, but I don't want those cases hanging out there while I'm away. So what are your thoughts on that, please? On Monday, I will be um, getting a train, a Maven training. Uh, I, I was in contact this week with Lionel White. Yep, okay. Um, so at least I'll be able to go on and, and look at numbers and, and okay. hopefully that way I'll be able to, um, I'll, if, I, if we have positive addresses, mm -hmm. give the addresses to the police department and mm -hmm. the fire department. Yep. So, Kate, when you get a positive case, I know you got a, a car full of gloves and masks. I mean, do you leave those with Tammy? Or who, who now? So when you that happens, you pass this out to the people who are positive. Is that correct? I ask them. I ask them if they need masks and gloves. And if they what's do... Your, what's your, been your response so far? Um, nobody has needed them except for the group homes in town. Okay. Because so they are no, very no. vigilant in um, PPE. So we need to get those, those, whatever you have, somewhere. Yep. So those could go. So I have about, um, I don't know, six or 700 pairs of gloves right now. I have no masks, but I can get those gloves to Tammy. Uh, okay. I don't necessarily need gloves right now. Do you have, do you have a good stock at the board I just, house? I just got an, another order in okay. last week. Okay. Yeah, but we might as well not leave that. We might as well not leave those boxes in Kate's car. Just put them. That would be my suggestion that we that we put them somewhere. I don't care where in town hall in case we need them. Okay. So I would it. say so I would say like the 18th, 19th, right? Whatever I have, I will get to town hall. Okay. Because I uh, might use some more up, and I don't know that yet. Tammy, is there any chance that we could farm this out to another public health nurse for the two months? Or can we find one or see if one's available? Um, I, was look, I was looking into um, the Hampton County Health Coalition does, has, has someone on staff who covers small towns that don't have a public health nurse. Um, I'm 
looking into that and mm -hmm. seeing what other people suggest. Sue, you have any suggestions? Um, my suggestion is I was going to leave it up to Kate and Tammy to figure out yeah. okay. so, how, to, how to cover Kate's position. Mm -hmm. Jean? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, Tammy, why don't you look into A, seeing what the collaborative can do for us, and B, maybe we can um, get somebody for two months. I know that someone had said that the school was willing to volunteer some nurses. I don't remember, I remember hearing that early on. So I guess the question would be, are, can they access MAVEN as well as you can? Well, they don't currently have access to MAVEN, um, but uh, quite frankly, that after this is all settled, that might change in the future because of resources um, being able to support at the local level in terms of um, follow up and yeah. um, being, you know, having more resources available. I don't know. I know Marsha, the nurse leader was interested, I don't know the turnaround time for getting her access <clears throat> um, to a Maven account because well, I know it's been in high demand, um, but I can ask. Okay, um, yeah, I, my guess is that if we tell that we don't have a, a nurse that they may, you know, um, help us a little bit. Right, um, right, because they're not going back to school. I know that. So, um, okay. you know, I, I can um, talk to Marsha about that and I'm sure that she would be willing to help. Okay, I think, Jean, you think that's the best option to get an RN that we can get up to speed in the next three weeks? I we think the best option would to make Kate stay home. Well, <laughs> I think that's the best option. <laughs> well, thanks, Jean. <laughs> I would love to do this on my LOA, but that's not going to fly with my husband. I have, you know, I have to prioritize, but um, no, I think, I think there could be um, definitely solutions to um, either the Hamden County, if, if they're familiar or they have access quicker and or getting um, one of the school nurses, i.e. Marsha, because she um, had uh, indicated interest. So Tammy, why don't you, um, you and Kate, like um, Sue said, put your heads together and see what we yep. can come up with for next week. Mm -hmm. And um, we get more of a definitive plan so we know the select board and everyone knows exactly who's going to be covering the town and um, what procedures we're going to use to make sure that our citizens. <laughs> so. Okay, that sounds fine. Doug? Somebody turns my Doug's mic on. Mm -hmm. Doug, did you, are you okay with that? Not that you need to be, but I think. I think we need to have a public health nurse on, available to us. So whatever the resource is available to, to do it. That's just my opinion. Okay, so that's going to be our objective. Um, so Tammy and Kate will work on it, and we'll get find ourselves a public health nurse. Yes, we will. Okay, that sounds fine. Um, Tammy, anything else? Hey, I'm sorry. Hey, you have anything else? No, I'm I'm good. Those are my two things that I needed to bring to the board. Okay, Tammy, you have anything else? No. Um, I've got some. I got a couple of people on the line. Does anybody have a public comment? Peter, anything? I actually do have a question today. How many seniors are graduating? Um, whenever that ends up happening. 115. 115. Okay. Uh, that's all I had. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Sue, you have anything you need to know? Um, no. No, Jean? I'm okay. No, I'm all set. Okay. I'll take a motion to adjourn until next week. Um, so next week, same time? Same time, same place. Wait a minute. Um, Jessica, you have anything we need to know? No, I just... 113 graduates. 13, okay, thank you. Acor according, to in, what, uh, according to what you sent out, Tammy. In the email that just came out this hour, mm -hmm. um, it's it says 115 now. They, they scratched up two more people. Okay. 
Two guys um, turned in their homework. <laughs> yeah. I just have one thing. The um, recordings of the minutes. Doug, do you s send the link out to Tammy? I'm just wondering, could I have the link to that so I can do the minutes? Jessica, here's the trick. Um, we absolutely can, and I'm going to try to figure that out. The problem is you don't have a Southwick MA address, and the way they have the sharing set up, it has to be to a Southwick MA address. So uh, I Jessica, will work on that. I, Jessica has a town hall address that she can access from home. Yeah, yeah. it's J-P-E-L-L-E-Y okay. at SouthwickMA.net. It's the regular email. Great. Then, then the answer to your question is much easier. Yes. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Tammy, you have anything you need to add? Um, no, no. Um, are you, um, how should I put this? How's your workload? Do you feel that you need some help from any of the other departments or you need more secretarial work? help or any other things that we can help you with besides, you know, slamming you with all this stuff? Um, this week, for some strange reason, has been uh, very, very slammed, but uh, nothing that I can't manage, not really. So, Doug, I guess if, if she gives you a, yes, I need more help, and the <laughs> selectman would be happy to make sure she gets it. Dr. Asia, I want to be very careful here and not about that particular request other than I see there's two selectmen on the line. I'm kind of joining as just to make sure your meeting goes well, but this is not posted as a selectman's meeting. So okay. I'll just say bring it back to us and we will we will handle it under uh, an agenda item for the Board of Selectmen. Okay, um, I'll do that. Thank you. I'd, I, I would just add that um, the select board, the police department, the fire department, um, a variety of departments have been very helpful in me getting the things that I need to get done done. And it just, it just shows how well our town works together. So Doug, I'll put it this way. Um, in the past, as a select board, um, been hesitant to um, help any town agency that needed it when it came to the COVID. 19. Now, the only, what I will say is what we have been asking anyone who's making a request or if there's any expenditure that, you know, detailed records are kept and try to attribute it, that expense to the COVID issue, because at some point there's going to have to be an accounting of additional expenses that are incurred from either a, from a state aid or federal aid recovery process much like an October storm. This is just like a long drawn out storm due to the state of emergency. So that everyone's got to keep careful records of expenses that are incurred um, as part of this disaster pandemic. Um, so that when the time comes to submit those records, we have them, mm -hmm. right? So if there's overtime and, and, and Tammy, I appreciate the feedback and, you know, we're doing all we can to support you and the board of health and, the police and the fire and everybody else and you know whatever we can do to help you we'll continue to do it thank you and it's my understanding that um the finance board put some more money into the health nurses account that's the i got oh we we there. we talked about a couple you know, i i can't speak for what the finance committee did just they looked at the budget i was on a fly on the wall in that meeting as well but they were they looked at that because there was a reserve fund transfer to the public health nurse line item. Okay. Um, and then there was a, in the 2021 20, budget, there was discussion about the salaries because of the new, um, the longer hours and new person in, in the, in Tammy's position. So that was not an issue. Okay. Um, Tammy. Yes. Sorry. I assume the our records are, detailed and accurate. Is that correct? Um, yes, but honestly, um, I've really tried to use all of my own, you know, my, my time and my own resources and not, and not resource out to get things done. So um, outside of um, the uh, funds that are going to have been going to Kate and outside of purchasing some PPE, I, I've really been utilizing what we have in, you know, in office and not having to farm anything out. 
okay. That, that answers my question. Right. But as, you know, as it comes, you know, as it comes up, if something does need to be bought, or there's additional hours, or you know, there's additional resource that needs to be brought to bear, you know, if if you know, we need to just keep track of that. Okay. That's all. That's fine. So. Um, yeah, before we hang up, I just want to know um, how things are going at Meadowview. Have we had any complaints or things going smoothly? Any I've had monitoring? no com I've had no complaints. Um, Chief Bishop has been very kind enough on the weekends to um, keep tabs on it. Uh, last weekend, he said, mm -hmm. even with that lovely weather, um, it looked great over the weekend. Um, I've gone by pretty much every day throughout the week through towards the entire town really um and i haven't seen any any issues it looks very similar when when you go there when it's when the parking lot is is at almost maximum capacity it really doesn't look any different than going into say like a, a big y or a costco's or something so gene you mentioned that someone either you were there i know i got a call from sue last week on uh, saturday or sunday very early by the way um, that Big Y was having some problems and then someone had mentioned that village, but I guess we had talked to them, but um, Tammy, do you want to go back to Big Y? Is that what, Gene, is that what you're thinking that they, they need to um, well, have another? It wasn't, Big Y wasn't the only place. Um, Tractor Supply, uh, the DB Mar. You know, and it's not like that I'm running around town. Um, these are people that are calling me or seeing me at town hall and saying, hey, I'm not wearing a mask because it's not being enforced. And what do you tell them? Sorry? Well, you're on your own, I guess. But um, have, have you been to these places since Wednesday? Because yes. I've been, oh, because I've been to some of these places like Tractor Trailer Supply, and they are now strictly enforcing it with the signs up everywhere. Yeah, well, the um, big Y I did go into yesterday, and they didn't, and there were people there without masks. So. Yeah, there was actually there was a guy standing at the meat counter arguing about how his meat was wrapped, and I have a relative that works at Big Y and. I had pointed it out to her saying uh, that guy's in here without a mask on. And again, she, can we, can we, can we, what can we do? You can, know, well, can we get a signs up on each, have go around each business and have them put a sign up? No mask, no service. I, I mailed personally to all of our, all of our um, food service establishments and a, a, a good number of other businesses, a sign that I made up that says um, that stipulates the governor's order of mandatory wearing them in, um, in retail businesses. Um, and they do have, a, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go they, ahead, Jane. They do have a person that's standing right by the door and I guess he's cleaning the um, wagons and, and stuff like that. So that there is somebody standing right there that sees these people going in without masks. So, my suggestion um, would be that Tammy makes sure that she goes around to all these places again and say, you need to put a sign up and you need to make sure you're the face mask, I hate to say this, police. And the sign goes up, you can make a different sign. You don't have to make it, make it, you know, well, however big we wanna make it, no, no mask, no service, no entry. And at that point, they're trespassing, and then they can let the police. I know they would. I know the police don't want to go out and every call because somebody's not wearing a mask. But um, I think at this point, um, it's been well. We will give it two days if we go by the governor's date. We've been going for a week, but I think our patient, my patients, is worn out. To tell you the truth. And can I ask a question? Sure, Sue. When our call went out last. Was a Friday, yeah. And the governor's um, guidelines. It's a little confusing because it sounds as if you wear a mask unless in these businesses, only if you can't stay six feet apart. No, that's not what it says. If you go inside 
a business, essential business, you have to have a face mask on. No, that's, um, that's, no, 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 no. That's no. not true? So our order was a little less, um, it was a little broader than the governor's, um, but the governor's order did um, stipulate um, employees and customers of grocery stores, pharmacies, and other retail establishments must wear masks at all times. So, so that mind. the social distancing doesn't apply in those places. It, it, it could, it does, you, you can, we can utilize the social distancing aspect in other, in other types of essential services like offices or uh, some machine shops or something like that, but not, that doesn't apply in grocery stores, things like that. And we can't make anything less restrictive. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, make your rounds, Tammy. You know, if you have to, or if you need help. That's what I've been doing. Okay. I think at, at some point, um, at some point the board needs to, you know, take some action to um, make sure that these rules apply. I think, and not just hear complaints all the time. I think at some point, you're well, right. I'm, so are, the, are the consequences? I'm sorry. All right, go ahead. I, I've also been, it, if any place that I haven't covered, I've been issuing them formal letters and um, keeping the signs and attaching the signs to them too. Listen, the, the, the amount of times I've been out, Big Y and well, Walgreens are practically empty now, but um, I would say 95% of the people who go in are have masks on um, public. And I think by this time, a lot of um, retail places, whatever, Big Y has all, everybody, their employees have masks. Even my friend in Roma, the granddaughter said that she was shocked. Victor had a mask on, believe it or not. So. Okay, well, they're supposed to have masks on, right? I know that, point. I'm not. It's Period. A, it's an inside joke, but that's not the point. Um, um, every, I think a lot of the restaurants and the retail places are are protecting their employees really well. I think it's the public, some public people aren't, aren't but it's still the responsibility of the business owner to make sure that he. Um, um, what, are, what are the consequences if an employee, an employee does not wear a mask? What are the consequences? From us or from the employer? Yeah, from us, from us. Well, I guess we can tell the employer that they, they're supposed to work. Well, wait, wait, wait. well, Tammy, is there anything? Is there any consequences? Is there any fines? Is there anything? Well, last week we had said that we weren't going to be penalizing monetarily, but then the governor's order came out and it does say we have the ability to penalize monetary funds. Mo do monetary they, penalties. Do they give you a cer certain amount or is that up, up to $300? The... That's okay. That's so that's a, that. that's, a, that's, a, that's a consequence of an employee or an employer doesn't or, wear a mask yeah. and they're supposed to. Yes. Or does that, does that apply to a, a public person too? I mean, I think it applies to any portion of the governor's order. Okay. So at some point we're going to start handing out tickets, I guess. You know, and let, you know, let them come to a Zoom meeting. You know. <laughs> I sure look forward to uh, meeting in person instead of these meetings. They're very awkward. I mean, I know we have to do them, but they are very awkward. Yeah, I'm in agreement with you on that, Sue. Yeah, yeah I do. I, I miss our camaraderie. So, yeah. Well, um, I don't know when that's going to happen. I mean, can I make a suggestion? Sure, Jean. Um, if Tammy, if you go out to these places and I, you, you're overworked now as it is, I'm not going to say you have to go to every retail establishment, but if you happen to be driving by, you know, the DB Mart or the, um, big Y or, you know, Walgreens, whatever, and you kind of stop and look around and notice to see if there is somebody not wearing a mask Maybe let the manager know that if this happens again, 
whether a, a Board of Health member or you see a person there without a mask, that they will be subject to a fine the next time? Okay. So? Yes, I agree with that. Okay. Cammy, you need any help? I'm retired. Yeah, just, just enforcing <laughs> it. <clears throat> I wish you weren't, Jerry. I got a hole in my tooth right there. Oh. Okay. Well, I can set you up. I actually have a chair in the basement. No, Peter, I don't. I still have an active license. So. Okay. Um, Kate, anything? No, um, just just one thing. I just checked in Maven um, by address. I don't see anything in there that's flagging for the address, so I will be calling the American in tomorrow to confirm um, if anyone is positive. Okay, thank you. Yes, thanks. Um, anybody else that's on? Peter, one last, any thoughts? No, thank you. I'm all set. Okay, good. Yeah, okay, I, I make a motion to adjourn the meeting at 7.20 p.m. One other comment before, I'm sorry. Oh. I think the businesses are doing well. I think it's some of the public that, um, I know someone, I won't name the place, came into, and someone said, you need a mask, and they say, well, I have a metal foot condition. I, I, I can't wear one. So, I mean, unless you're going to make them get a um, doctor's note, you got to take them for their word, you know. So I guess there's a, a limit, you know, if someone's going to say I have a medical condition. So, okay, you have a medical condition. You throw COVID on top of it, you know, have more medical conditions. Okay, so what do you think? Um, I'm ready to adjourn the meeting. Okay, so I got a motion to adjourn. I got a second. Second. Favor, Jean? I was the one that made the motion. I, I, second, I second your motion, Gene. Thank you, Sue. Does. Okay. okay, all in favor, Gene. Okay, roll call vote. Gene Nelson, yes. Sue, Sue, yes. Jerry, yes. Okay, we're adjourned until next Thursday.